Um, so first of all, thanks Matthew for the introduction. And my name is Kai Jansen. I'm a PhD student at the Ruhr University in Bochum, Germany. And today I'm going to present Cloud GPS Sec, a system to detect and localize GPS spoofing attacks by using a crowdsourcing sensor network and picking up aircraft broadcast signals. Um, this is joint work with my colleagues, uh, Matthias Schäfer and Jens Schmidt from TU Kaiserslautern, Daniel Moser from ETH Zurich, Vincent Lenders from Amerswiss, and Christina Pepper from NYU Abu Dhabi. Um, in June last year, the US Department of Transportation issued a um, warning of GPS interference in the Black Sea. So one might, ha uh, might wonder what has happened. Um, ships that were cruising in the vicinity um, of the Russian border in the Black Sea actually reported their position, not as a sea level indicated by the orange dot here, but however, they reported a GPS position that was close to a, um, an, uh, the runways of a nearby airport. And um, actually, uh, to get this clear, this was um, one of the first uh, publicly known events of GPS spoofing, where an unknown remote attacker um, successfully performed GPS spoofing on multiple victims um, over an extended period of time. Later that year, GPS World, an online um, news uh, platform for navigation news, um, tried to reason a little bit about the spoofer location and they came up with uh, this broader map where they uh, indicated possible locations. They based their analysis on received signal strength or the elevation of the underlying terrain. And um, however, as you can see here, the proliferation of their um, indicated area is uh, around uh, or is, uh, tens of uh, kilometers wide. The question that this talk is going to answer is uh, whether we can do it better, and um, if we can do so, by how much can we do it better? So by how much can we localize a GPS moving source? Um, first of all, let me briefly introduce the databases we are using um, nowadays. Aircraft use additional systems and protocol to uh, ease um, air traffic surveillance. So for example, um, they broadcast uh, ADSB or FLAM signals, which uh, in turn contain status reports uh, that are made up by at least an identification um, data or GPS data on the position and additional data on their movement. Um, to pick up these signals, um, you could use uh, ground-based sensors, and this can be as easy as a uh, Raspberry Pi coupled with a, uh, with a tiny ATL um, dongle and a, a very simple antenna. A, a network that already performs so is the Open Sky Network, and two of my co-authors were actually members of the founding team. And as you can see here, if uh, multiple of those sensors and that, that particular network is made up of around or more than 700 uh, voluntarily operated uh, sensors. Um, if they unite their data, you can actually generate those live air traffic maps. Um, this forms uh, the databases we use. So we now have a look at our threat model. Uh, we consider a GPS spoofing attacker. Um, 10 years ago, you needed um, a special purpose device, which was coupled with a high cost, high complexity, in order to perform such attacks. However, um, with the years, um, the costs went down, the complexity went down, and nowadays you are able to build your own GPS spoofing attacker by using a software-defined radio running um, software that is freely available on the internet. So um, what happens now if such an attacker tries to target aircraft? It will broadcast its signal toward the, the air, and um, in the case of a successful attack, um, the aircraft will use those fake positions and broadcast them or rebroadcast them back um, within their status reports down to the earth where they are now picked up by the sensors of the network. Um, we designed Crowd GPS Sec to answer two questions. So the first question is uh, how can we detect such uh, an ongoing spoofing attack? And the second question is um, in the case we were able to detect a spoofing attack, uh, can we actually localize the spoofing source? Um, 
Uh, first of all, um, since you have just seen that aircraft can actually lie about their own position in case of spoofing, uh, we implemented a second source of positioning, of aircraft positioning, um, by implementing a multilateration approach uh, based on time difference of arrival. So um, this picture briefly depicts the situation here. An aircraft broadcasts a signal, which is then uh, received by multiple sensors on ground. And um, depending on the differences in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the arrival times and the differences between the, uh, between the aircraft and the sensors, we can actually relate both of these, uh, both of these parts of the equation. Uh, and, and possible solutions are marked here with a blue line uh, where, where, this, where the, uh, the source could have been. And if we extend those systems further, so for example using three sensors or even more, we get more of these equations, which then ultimately uh, intersect in a uh, distinct point, which marks the most likely uh, position of the aircraft. Um, having built a secondary source of uh, aircraft localization, we are now ready to have a look at how we can uh, detect spoofing attacks. We designed two tests for that. So the first test is based on a comparison between the now, uh, the now uh, the, our, our position that we just calculated from, from the multilateration approach with the um, position of the, that the aircraft broadcast itself. Um, so if the inconsistencies between both positions are too high, this could be a first indication of a spoofing attack. The second um, test is a mutual comparison between the uh, ADSB positions of different aircrafts. So under normal operation, uh, aircraft positions won't be the same. However, um, considering a spoofing attack, these can actually be overlapping, which can then in turn uh, point towards a possible spoofing incident. Um, having answered the first question, so we are now able to detect spoofing attacks, um, the question that still remains unanswered is how can we now uh, localize a spoofing source? Um, let's take a step back and have a look at the GPS spoofer again. In case that the GPS spoofer targets aircraft, it will be likely that the spoofer decides to, uh, to spoof a certain track of a certain speed um, with, the, with the purpose of manipulating um, a certain aircraft track. And um, when the signal is sent out and received by different aircraft um, at different distances to the spoofing source, they will um, consequently report different um, positions on the spoof track. So for example, if aircraft one here uh, receives the signal a little bit earlier than aircraft two, it will report a position that is a little bit uh, ahead on track as compared to aircraft two, which will report a position that is a little bit behind on track. And we can now uh, calculate the, dif the differences on this spoof track. Um, and this is the difference between their, ADS or their re reported ADSB positions. Um, let's generalize this scenario again. Um, if we have a spoofer now that, uh, that sends out a signal that is received by two aircraft, we can now build relations between the differences in their physical locations um, and, their, uh, and our calculated differences in the ADSB reports. And if we relate both, both of these uh, values, we can again uh, obtain multiple solutions, which is uh, marked by this blue line here. And we, if we extend the system by using uh, three aircraft or multiple aircraft, we obtain multiple of those equations and um, all of the solutions of the equations will now intersect in a, uh, in a hopefully in a single point, which now indicates the spoofing source. Um, from a theoretical point of view, this uh, completes our system. We are now able to first uh, um, first detect spoofing attacks, and second, try to reason about the spoofer loca location. Um, however, since we are dealing with uh, measurements and also over the wireless channels, um, we need to have a proper error assessment. Um, if we have a closer look at our relations here, um, we identified uh, three distinct parameters that have a certain impact on uh, our localization performance. So uh, first of all, there's the noise or the error in our MLAT system. Um, we analyzed it to have a very low impact on the, spoofing uh, on the spoofer localization um, accuracy. 
Um, on the other hand, the uh, error in the GPS noise, in the um, ADSB positions, or in the differences in the ADSB positions, positions were analyzed to have a very high impact on the localization performance. And lastly, the spoofed track velocity has also an impact on our uh, achieved accuracy. However, we um, analyzed it to have only a moderate impact. To get a little bit more into detail here, um, I have a closer look uh, at the GPS noise or the impact of the GPS noise. Um, we simulated a spoofing attack and sampled real-world data from the Open Sky Network and performed several um, simulations and uh, assumed different um, values for the GPS noise. So we made simulations with more co conservative error models and went down to a little bit beneficial models. Um, using um, conservative models, we actually achieved a uh, spoofer localization with an offset of just 8.4 kilometers. Uh, however, if we consider uh, more beneficial um, error models, we can actually bring down this uh, accuracy down to an error of uh, only a few meters. If we uh, take a look back at our, uh, our, at our initial slide of the, um, of the, just, uh, of the broad um, localization that the GPS world performed, and if we visualize now our results, um, we actually can shrink this area to just a very, very small area here. And I have to say, this is not the real location. This is just a visualization. Um, let me finally make uh, two major remarks of our, of our system. Uh, we were able to achieve all of this with just um, the, set, or the, the data that Sandoz provided that were actually not um, the target of the spoofer, but um, only relayed aircraft broadcast signals. And um, finally, we, or our system, neither requires any changes in the uh, protocols nor the hardware and is actually ready to be implemented it only uses an existing infrastructure. Let's um, come to a conclusion. I've showed you two different tests of how to um, detect GPS spoofing. Uh, first of all, we um, uh, compared MLOT positions with ADSB positions, and the second test was um, mutual comparison between different ADSB positions. I've showed how um, our spoofing localization performs and um, by comparing distances um, between the spoofing source and aircraft with the distances in the reported ADSP positions. And uh, finally, I visualized our achievable um, localization performance. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention, and I want to thank, also thank two of my uh, close colleagues, uh, Katharina and David, for helping out with my slides. Remember, please state your name and affiliation. Hi, Karen Utech, uh, MIT Lincoln Labs. I was curious, it's crowdsourced. So how uh, affected do you think it would be by some of those sensors in the crowd being malicious? Um, that's a very, very good question. Um, I think as long as the malicious sensors cannot like, overvote um, the beneath sensors, um, we are fine. Of course, um, if all of these sensors lie, uh, lie um, we don't have any means to, to uh, detect that. Hi, uh, Patrick Trainer from Florida. Uh, this is really cool work. I, I'm just curious, uh, how much historical data do you have? I, I'd heard about this incident with the ship, uh, but it would be really interesting if you go back in time and actually find other similar results that maybe we didn't know about. Am I ruining a future paper? Or yeah. <laughs> Um, so um, the Open Sky Network actually collects data since several years. Uh -huh. um, however, we, we tried to also find data on this um, spoofing event, the Black Sea. However, there were no um, no, no sensors available that picked up uh, sensors from from that specific time. So um, if you have data from that, uh, feel free <laughs> to, to give me. Thank you. So I have, uh, I guess, the final question. Uh, what range of vehicles does this apply to? Military aircraft, drones, uh, ships also. I know there's spoofing in ships as a kind of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some insight on to what changes would made, be, made to, need to be made, what it applies to? So our system just requires um, a, a um, 
or the, the, the signals to be affected by the GPS spoofing attack. So it doesn't matter what, what if it's drones or vehicles or aircraft. Um, if we are, if we get those um, those information from the from the uh, signals, uh, we are fine with that. So you can also use uh, everything that uses a GPS receiver. Cool. Let's thank our speaker.